How's it going, everybody? We have an awesome behind the scenes video of how Game Nights is made for you today on the channel. But before we get into it, we want to let you know that this video is brought to you by Verve. It's a brand new streaming platform, and we actually got in contact with these guys a couple of months ago. Yeah, because we were on Anime Crimes Division, which was a series that Rocket Jump did that was sponsored by Crunchyroll. Yeah, and Crunchyroll is actually a part of Verve. So what Verve is, is a brand new streaming service, and for a limited time only, you can get a 30-day free trial to 13 different channels ad-free. We have Crunchyroll, Rooster Teeth, Funimation, Cartoon Hangover, Drama Fever, uh, which is, by the way, the source for K-dramas online. I know a lot of you guys like that out there. You know, one of the things I really like about this service is they have offline downloads, which means you can watch all of those shows even if you don't currently have an internet connection. Pretty convenient when you're, say, traveling in an airplane, oh, yeah. uh, camping um, at the beach. Oh, lots of great places to do it at the library. At the li Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> There's a ton of really... <laughs> So if you like any of these streaming services, they're now all in one place. Make sure you click the link in the description box below if you want to sign up for your free 30-day trial right now. And before we start the video, I just wanna say we are running an audition right now where you have a chance to make a guest appearance on Game Nights. Oh. Stick around to the end of this video to find out how you can audition. All right, let's watch behind the scenes of Game Nights. What's up, guys? Hey, how's it going? How's it going? I understand you guys are about to go on the show. What show? There's a show? There's a, there's a show being taped in there. Oh, what's it called? Game Nights began as an idea that Jimmy and I had to sort of take Commander gameplay to the next level. So late in the year of 2016, we got a box in the mail and it was actually the Commander Precon decks and we got them early and it was a good excuse for us to give this a shot, to give gameplay videos a shot. We came up with the idea, let's make a show, and we called it Out of the Box, and that was sort of the first pilot episode of what ended up becoming Game Nights. The show has improved leaps and bounds since the very first episode. The card images are very low quality. The animations where the cards interact with each other or with other players have taken huge steps forward. In the early stages, it was very much a ramshackle, just like throw it all together, just point the cameras and hope it works out in the end. Our philosophy always with the channel is constant improvement and evolution, and we are always trying for the next episode of Game Nights to have improvements over the previous episode. And that's something I can really confidently say that we've been able to do with Game Nights, you know, all the way down to learning how to color correct better, mix the sound, and for someone like Josh, how to really refine the editing process and, and use graphics and VFX to make it really fun to watch. It's been a pretty amazing ride to watch Game Nights and, and all the popularity and growth that it's caused for our channel. We now have over 100,000 subscribers, Game Nights as a series has over 4 million views. It's done really well in its first year of inception. We've been able to grow the show so much and it, it's kind of crazy how far we've come since the beginning. We've taken a lot of pride in it. It's clearly content that people want. But with all that being said, we still get questions about how we make this show every single day on Twitter and on Facebook and on YouTube. So today we're gonna take you through our process and how we make an episode of Game Nights. There's a lot of prep that goes into every single episode. For one, all of our guests usually need to build a deck or bring a deck to the table and also make sure that the deck is available online so that we can post the deck list when the actual show begins. Then it goes to the logistics of figuring out, all right, who's our guest gonna be for this episode? What are we gonna base it around? When they're gonna fly in, where they're gonna stay, what day you're gonna shoot. That day that you're gonna shoot is also predicated on stuff like when can you get the product? So like a lot of times, we are using cards that haven't been released to the public yet and we're working with Wizards of the Coast trying to determine what's the earliest date that we can get those cards so that we can shoot the episode so that we have enough time to edit it so that when it comes out, it actually times up near the release of that set or something like that. If we're doing an episode about Unstable, well then we're gonna try and get Unstable playmats, sleeves, and whatever else we can so that the whole world of the table and of game nights is thematically connected to what we're doing. We also have these awesome screens behind us that we have on every single episode that play these animations of cards and art. So that involves contacting the animator, getting them the assets, and working through a small revision process, and then finally exporting them, putting them onto our computers, and then putting them onto the screens. So there's a lot of time spent just sending emails and making sure the logistics are all in place and everything's set up and ready to go so that when you do get on set, you aren't missing any key piece that you really need. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Welcome back. Right. You welcome back. Yeah. How's the trip? It was good. He tells me you welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> 
So we get here early in the morning, we start setting up the camera. We have a director of photography, Lauren, and she has rigged up all the lights and how the camera sits. And Jimmy and Lauren kind of go through setting up all the camera angles, making sure the lighting is perfect. All of these cameras need to be working in sync as well as setting up the audio so that we can hear everyone around the table. High tech sound recorder hanging set up. Yeah, this is, this is how janky as it gets. Better than, you know, it used to be just sort of tied to a lamp. Yeah, there's a lot of little things that go in, like we have to tape down the play mats to the table because when the play mats start to move, it makes things harder in editing. Once that is all done and ready to go, Josh heads out to pick up our guests, brings them back, and we're almost ready to shoot. So where are we going? We are on our way to pick up some of the guests for game nights. Our first guests uh, that are not from the US. Wow. Exciting about as exciting as this red light that we're <laughs> You know, at first, this show was kind of a great excuse for us to bring some of our best friends in, the people that we really cut our teeth with in Los Angeles playing Commander when we first started playing. And now we've expanded it to include all kinds of guests from across the spectrum in the Magic community. I'm Mark Rosewater, I'm the head designer for Magic the Gathering. Defensive end for the Seattle Seahawks. A cosplayer for Magic the Gathering. Hey everyone, I'm Wedge from the Mana Source. I got to be the lead creative for this set. I played in 18 Pro Tours. Game designer at Wizards of the Coast. I'm Megan from Magic the Amateuring. Hi, I'm the professor, I'm here to say. I worked on Magic for the last six years. I do Pro Tour coverage. I dress up like a weirdo on the weekends. <laughs> It's a dream come true for us because we've been able to bring on some incredible guests. It's definitely one of the biggest upsides of making a show like this. Who would be like the dream guest to have on the show? I'm not sure who I would. I think Barack Obama would be really cool to get on the show. That'd be pretty sweet. I think that would be my dream guest. You think it can happen? Probably, right? Here's the thing. My personal ultimate guest on the show has already been on the show, and that is Mark Rosewater. I had a horrible, horrible seat. You had a horrible seat? I horrible, was horrible. Second last in the back row in the in the middle. Ooh. I, 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 uh, I got upgraded to first class, so it was pretty nice. Um, but, uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Being able to bring him down with his extremely busy schedule and play a set with him that he has put six years of work and love and time into was really one of the greatest experiences of my life. This is the way I, I describe it, that when I started the design, my daughter was in fifth grade, and next week she's applying to college. Wow. <laughs> bring them to the set, give them a quick tour. That's just Mark Rosewater. That's a magic trick, too. Very nice. <laughs> Who's this gorgeous gentleman at the camera? We've <laughs> <laughs> met before, right? Yeah, I'm Terry. I think we met at GPLA. That's right. Nice to meet you, Mark. Nice you. I started on the Command Zone podcast, I think on episode 82, maybe. I was fortunate enough that the guys called me and said, would you like to come out to Los Angeles and help us cut game nights? And that was a dream come true. I can't think of a, a situation where I could learn more in the industry than working for these two guys. We have Danny who's a judge, so he's making sure we don't have any sort of rules infractions, but also he's in charge of keeping track of the game. Terry, nice to meet you. <laughs> How are you, man? Good. How's your flight? Good. Well, I had a horrible seat, but other than that, good. <laughs> this is Lauren. Lauren is our, uh, hey, is our director of photography. Nice Lauren, this is Gavin and Mark. Man, this looks awesome. Well, we've come a long way from uh, your kitchen table, Jimmy. Yeah, I know, right? We talked to them about the plan for the day. Uh, we explained how the shooting of Game Nights works. We're going to do turn order like one, two, then this game will go three, four. Sure. Oh, sure. Three. Because it doesn't really work exactly like a normal game. There's a lot more pieces going on. It's, it's kind of neat to sort of put together something that, you know, it's chopped together and makes the show, and so it's, it's a different experience. Okay, do call him Mark? Yeah, call him Mark. What people don't realize behind the scenes is every movement, you're making sure you do things right and you correct yourself if you don't. Yeah, it sometimes is a little difficult to be like, hold on, can we can we go back and redo that turn? And this time when you play that card, play it into this open space. I play Perilous Voyage, targeting your grazing whip tail. Ooh. Do me a favor, just. Exactly. Just set it down and remove your oh, hand. Oh, okay, okay. Because the card will fly up. Asking people to re-say things or restate things for clarity. I will swing at you. Do me a favor, say Josh. Okay. I will swing at Josh. So that not only is it fast, but you do get everything. All right, I will play Mishra's Bobble. Say, say the prospect. Oh yeah, all right. I play Mishra's Bobble. Triggering prowess on my Swool Seeker. So after every single game that we play, we go to the interview room. Okay. We're all in on audio. All right, can you clap in front of your face, please? Prof interview, Game Nights episode 12. When we sit down at the interviews, our judge Danny has been sitting there and typing out every single interaction that happened in the game before. So we get to walk through the entire game step by step and make sure that every little thing that happens during the game, somebody has commented on, so we have that to use in the editing process. Josh isn't gonna go after me, right? Wedge is the obvious threat. Wedge is the threat. 
very, that was you very, you trying to convince me after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> so even though the interviews happen after the fact, we make sure that every time we get interviewed, you're always talking in the present tense. And the fact that he didn't really have a lot of creatures out at that point meant that he had a lot of artifacts doesn't and really enchantments have out. a lot of creatures out at this point. Oh. So the fact that he doesn't really have a lot of creatures out at this point, it also allows for people to react in sort of a private manner and tell people how they feel in the moment. It's good to say like you're feeling right because in Magic there's not a like, great scoreboard. Right. Okay. So even like so I'm a little worried. When he played the test subject, he had a mad science fair project and those two combo really well. So I, I'm a little worried about it. That's great. How they were feeling, what they were expecting, what they were suspecting of other players. Aw, oh, son of a biscuit! Dang it! How am I supposed to win now? <laughs> but ultimately it really does lend towards a better viewing experience. Mark, you have been knighted. The knighting ceremony, I'm not really sure how it got started. I think it kind of just spontaneously started happening. I think like in the early ones, we just kind of like motioned with it and then eventually we started using like maybe the play mats and then I think in one of them, we actually happened to have like an Egyptian style staff that we use, and, but it was just something we wanted to do to Anytime anybody's on the show for the first time, we can kind of make a big deal of it. Okay, let's just do the only one way stand. Okay. So I'll say welcome to Game Mites, and then everybody all at once. Okay. Uh, Mark and Jimmy are here, Gavin, we're there. Okay. okay. Welcome to Game Nights! Only, only one may stand. stand! After one time we all said welcome to Game Nights, I just randomly blurted it out. Welcome to Game Nights. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> only one way stand! <laughs> Which doesn't really make that much sense if I think about it, because we're all sitting. And then we just started repeating it. Only one may stand. Right, that's kind of determined oh, to say that every time. <laughs> but I think I was actually going for something more of like, only one person will be left alive, but what ended up coming out was only one may stand, and it sort of become the catchphrase of the show. We've had a lot of people asking us for like t-shirts or something with only one may stand. I, I would say there's a good chance something like that happens in the future. Oh, we forgot something. Uh, only one may stand. All right, here we go. <laughs> I will draw. One of the fun things that we started doing when we started improving the show was, hey, we should get some reaction shots of people when they get hit by a creature because that's another fun visual way to convey what's happening in the game. And then we do freeze frames, so when like a card hits you, it'll, it'll sort of like uh, uh, make funny face. So I want oh, you to do some like freeze frame faces of like you're getting smacked. So like you got punched in the stomach. You got punched in the face. Maybe just like wide eyes. Mom just slapped you. You're punching the nuts. Oh. And one more smile though, just one more. Good. Maybe, I, I don't know, what else you got? I don't know, I've never done this. Kicked in the stomach. Oh. Hit slap in the face. Oh. Step on your foot. Oh. Uh, somebody slapped you. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Shooting game nights always takes a lot more time and it's a lot more exhausting than people expect. People have spent eight, nine hours now mentally focused on the game as well as mentally focused on performing for camera and mentally focused on delivering interviews. Luckily our guests have always been awesome and a lot of times people that are used to being on camera, they're pros at it basically, so we've been really lucky in that regard. So after we are all done, it's time for everything to wrap up. Once the guests leave though, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. For one, I need to go around to every single camera and upload all of the footage onto our hard drives. And then I need to take the footage into an editing program. And then I apply a layer of color correction to each piece of the footage so that it looks as vibrant and beautiful as possible. And then we set all the footage to export. We usually leave it on overnight. And the very next morning, we begin post-production. This is the type of thing we do like a hundred times per game night to episode. And it's a very simple card fly in. So I'm gonna play Vizier of the Menagerie. So the first thing I would do is I take the card, the digital image of the card, and I place it onto the timeline. After that, I need to put a 3D effect onto the card. Otherwise, it's gonna look very flat. We want it to have some swivel to it so it looks like it's moving in 3D space. Uh, the next thing I do is I set some keyframes and then I resize the card and I place it in exactly the same spot on the play mat. So the digital image is laid exactly on top of the real image of the card. And so you can see, once I've done that, the card sort of starts on the play mat and then it flies up towards camera. And then after that, I need to remove the physical actual card that was played so that now only the graphic digital image of the card remains under it. And then the very last thing is we do a sort of little blur behind the card just so that the audience is forced to pay attention to what we want them to pay attention to. And uh, then we play the whole thing and you can see that the card jumps off the table and everybody can get a good look at it so that everybody knows what every card does. And that's just for the simple cards. So some come in and they create tokens and obviously that gets more complex and takes more time. But really just every card that gets played, this is the process we have to go through at a minimum. Yeah, how many times do you think you've done this effect? Through like all the episodes? Yeah, through all 14 episodes now. Um, 
probably in the neighborhood of like seven, eight hundred times. Oh my God. I mean, as a guess, but something around that probably. Man, it seems like a lot when you say it like that. So here's the thing, I don't actually get involved with the editing process and it's definitely the most time consuming part of the show by far. The truth is that nothing ever creates less work. Everything always creates more work. So as the series has gone along, it's definitely grown to the point where I used to be able to cut it all by myself in just under a hundred hours. And now it takes multiple people each working for that amount of time to create one episode. It can be more complicated. For example, the unstable episode had a lot of sort of strange mechanics and we took a lot of time figuring figuring out exactly how to visually represent those in a simple manner. It's hard to say every episode takes this amount of time, but they definitely take longer than most people think. Well, we got two cameras on the interview, so that's yeah. two and a half hours per person, mm -hmm. which is, what, 10 hours of interview. Yeah. And then we have four cameras on the game. Mm -hmm. That one was close to three hours, so 26 hours down to 35, 40 minutes. But hey, why can't we do this every week, Graham? <laughs> yeah, Josh. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> So I had to come in today and show Josh my cut. As an editor, this is one of your most nervous days because you are putting everything into making this video and the big wig, the head honcho, comes in and sits down over your shoulder and breathes down your neck and tells you what is good and what is not. So Craig Blanchett. Oh, all right, Sir Craig. Craig. There's a weird continuity cut here where the sword like comes down on his right shoulder and just suddenly is on his left. Josh has a cadence for game nights that's constantly going in his head. He knows the timing of this show inside and out. This feels out of nowhere. It feels like you want to say, have him say, I draw my card for turn, <sighs> sigh, and then say, I didn't draw land, I don't have any lands in my hand, so it'll all sort of tie together, I think, right. it a little bit. A little bit of a cleaner little story within that turn. Josh is a perfectionist. On the combats, just so a little ching ching. Yeah. Type I like the sounds you've got in there, but you add a little metal in there. His mantra of constant improvement and evolution is not a joke. I would have each rat come in individually. Bing, 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 bing. Just because the amount matters. So if it's one, it's not that impressive. When it's like 12 and it's like bing, 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 it feels like a lot. Say something nice and wrap it up. I think this is probably the best that you've done so far. Definitely don't let the notes discourage you. I'll hit 10 minutes, I'll go rewatch the thing, and I'll have to do exactly what you're doing. I'll These aren't even close to the worst notes you've ever <laughs> Not even close. So once we're finished editing the gameplay, the last thing we have to do is shoot the intro, mid-roll, and outro for the episode. I figure what we'll do is we'll start. We'll be singing happy birthday. Happy birthday, dear game nights. We'll say, hey, it's the one year anniversary, or it's the one year anniversary. I cannot believe we are one year old. Seriously, it's been a full year and we've come so far. I mean, look at where we are now. So what does the future have in store for Game Nights? You know, one of the things we've really wanted to do with the show is expand into other formats in Magic. We've done Two at a Giant, we've done Sealed, we've done Draft. You know, we want to make sure that anyone that watches this show can learn a little bit more about Magic and that it's not destined to be one specific thing because for us that chokes the creativity of the show and it also makes it less of a fun experience for us. If you're a fan of Draft and you watch our Game Nights episode on Draft, you might then watch our Commander episodes and get into Commander and the same thing can work from Commander to Draft or Limited. So we're really hoping to expose people to some stuff that they might enjoy that they just haven't tried yet. Game Nights' is future, I don't really know, but I just know that whenever we see a challenge ahead of us and a hurdle that we can cross, we're gonna try and cross it. Thanks for watching this behind the scenes look at the process we use to create Game Nights. Of course, there's so much more that we couldn't tell you in this short featurette, but we hope to bring more information to you in the future. Until then, we have a couple of episodes in the works that are some of my absolute favorites that we have filmed. So, hope you guys are subscribed to the channel. Can't wait to show you more of the Game Nights universe, and thanks for watching. See you next time. Okay, so those of you that are still here, I'm assuming that you're interested in making an appearance on Game Nights. That's right. You can audition right now to be one of the guests on the show. Jimmy, 
how do they enter? Well, it's pretty simple. Click again on the link in the description box below. It's gonna have all of the contest rules and regulations and information. Make sure you read it a couple of times over, follow all the rules and send in your audition tape. You have until our 200th episode. And again, all the rules are right there. We can't wait to see your audition and whether or not you're gonna be on the next episode of Game Nights. All right, everybody, good luck.